Hey, how the hell do you protect your API routes? I'm not sure. To make sure I don't leak vulnerable information, to make sure the endpoints don't get spammed, to make sure everything goes right and they are properly secured, I always take five steps and here they are. Step number one is by far the easiest and nowadays you barely have to worry about it except you do everything yourself, but that is use HTTPS. Make sure the connection between client and server is encrypted so nobody can do a man in the middle attack and read your data that is passed from the client to the server and back. Again, nowadays you don't really have to think about it it's mostly done automatically for you number two is really important it's authentication and authorization those are two different things authentication means ensuring the user is who they claim to be either through OAuth through Google or through github or through a password authentication with email and password you know and in return for those credentials the user gets a token that is either a JSON web token or it can be a session token that you also store in a database those are the two different approaches to authentication. Now the important thing is whenever that user makes a request to your API that HTTP only cookie meaning it can't be changed by JavaScript or read by JavaScript is going to be automatically sent along in the request to your server and then either you validate the signature of the JSON web token in your API route or you go ahead and fetch that session cookie in the database and see if that is a valid session. And that is the authentication part done. Now you know the user is who they claim to be, for example, their email. And then authorization is the question of, well, we now know who the user is, but what are they allowed to do? If we have something like role-based authentication, are they an admin, are they a user? Or if we don't have that, well, what is any user allowed to do? Are they allowed to change their name in the database? How can they interact with the database? That is what authorization is about. So usually what you do is logical checks before you perform a certain action that is linked to an API endpoint. Like for example, the goal of one API endpoint is to change a username in a database. Before doing that, in regards of authorization, an example would be, has the user changed their username more than three times in the past hour? And if they did, well, then they are not authorized to do that same action in the same hour again. Okay, so now we're sending encrypted data traffic, know who the user is and what they're allowed to do. But anyone, even without being logged in, could totally spam your API endpoint and force you to make so many requests back and forth to your database, costing you money. So step number three is rate limit your API endpoints. Don't allow anybody to spam the hell out of them rate limit them. For example, what I usually do is use Upstash for this. Just full disclosure, I am sponsored by Upstash, but I used them before they sponsored me. I used them in personal projects that they are not sponsoring at all, that are not public. I just personally use them and that's why I stand behind their product and agree to being sponsored by them. So I think personally Upstash makes this really easy to protect your API endpoints, especially in a serverless environment, for example Next.js. That is mainly what Upstash is used for if you're using server full technology like Node.js for example and Express, there are packages just for that that rate limit your API endpoints even easier than in serverless environments. Okay, now nobody can spam our API anymore. We know who is trying to make a request and we know what that person is allowed to do. But we cannot ensure that person is trying to make a malicious request because just knowing who the user is doesn't mean that they're friendly or not trying to inject something really harmful into our API routes. And that's why we do the next step. And that step is input validation. It is so, so, so important. You need to validate client input. Anyone can make any request to any of your API routes with any data that they want. So you need to make sure that the data you get on your server and then process in the request is actually what you expect and not malicious input. And I personally do a lot of work in the Node.js, Express, Next.js environment. So just in the JavaScript, TypeScript environment. And therefore I like to use schema validation libraries for this. In TypeScript, you can use something called Yup or you could use something called Zod. Essentially, they allow you to do the same thing. You define a certain schema, a type of data that you're expecting on your backend that you can then parse against. So you can parse any data, no matter what it is, against that schema. And if that data that you're parsing does not match the schema, your server will throw an error because you cannot handle the request with data that you're not expecting. And only if the data that is passed into your API endpoint is of the certain schema type. And by the way, in this schema you can literally define everything you can define you want a 
string that is a maximum of 100 characters that matches a certain regex, you can refine that even if you want to. You can make really sure the data that you're receiving on the server is precisely what you're getting. And if that parses correctly, then you know, okay, the data is fine, we can actually work with it. All right, we've ensured there is encrypted traffic. We know who is making a request, what they're allowed to do, and nobody can spam our API endpoints. And we even know that the data that we're getting is exactly what we want. But what we haven't done yet is super crucial and step number five, really important, error handling. We can never ensure that everything works smoothly in our API. Chances are you're also relying on some third party API. It's just an API to API. There's a lot of communication. There's a lot of stuff that could go wrong. Servers not responding, you never know. And therefore you want a very solid error handling. The way you do that, at least in the environment that I'm familiar with is in a try catch block. I think it's the same in Java where you can try a certain function and then catch any errors that should occur. And then the C secret to good error handling is sending back the proper HTTP status codes of what's happening because then you can check those on the client and display an according error message to the user, like a 400 bad request or a 4 or 9 there's a conflict in the naming for example. So you want to make sure you're checking the error in the catch block if it matches a certain type. For example, if you're using Axios then you might check if it's an Axios error and if it is then you know the structure of the error. Similarly, if you're using a certain schema validation library to validate the input, Remember, when the parsing fails, there's an error being thrown. And in the catch block, you can check if the error is of that type, if it was created by Zod or by Yup. And if it turns out the error is in the shape of a Zod or Yup error and caused by them, that allows you to really easily handle how you send back your HTTP status codes to the client. And then finally, if you have no idea what the error is, if it's neither an Axios error or a Zod error or whatever tools you're using in your app, then in the worst case, you can always send back a generic 500 error message. You know, you don't know what's wrong, so just send back an internal server error. And those are my steps to properly securing your API endpoints. If I missed anything, be sure to let me know. And also, this video was inspired by a Twitter post by this user right here. Um, I'm gonna link them in the description. That's where the inspiration for this video came from on how to secure your REST API routes, but with my own twist to it. For example, the authorization was not mentioned in that thread at all, which I feel like is really important to properly secure your API endpoints as well. Thanks very much for watching. I really hope you learned something new on how to properly protect your API endpoints. And then I'm gonna see you in the next video. Have a good one and bye-bye.